And joining me now, Wisconsin Republican Congressman Sean Duffy, a member of the Joint Economic Committee. Uh, Congressman, I know we want to talk to you about this health care repeal vote, but uh, any reaction now that the Republican Campaign Committee has also called for some explanation for Jesse Jackson's uh, long and continued absence from the Hill? Yeah, listen, I haven't heard uh, the NRCC's uh, push on uh, Representative Jackson, but I got to tell you what, I know that people come under a lot of uh, pressure and stress, and uh, that he has personal issues. Uh, I feel for him, and uh, I wish him my best and his family the best, and uh, let him know we pray for him. Thanks so much on that and uh, on the repeal. One question that comes to mind is why? Why bother 33 times going through this exercise when you know what the outcome is going to be? Well, listen, first of all, we've done some very popular things with uh, the small repeals from the 1099 uh, tax repeal uh, to the medical uh, device tax repeal. But I think we see more and more Americans, they're not happy with this legislation, where uh, we were promised that this was going to be a jobs bill. We were told it was going to create 400,000 new jobs. We were told that health care premiums were going to go down by $2,500 by the end of the first term of the president. We've seen those actually go up by $1,200. A lot of the promises that have been made uh, just haven't come to be true. One of my concerns in my community uh, is what's going to happen with Medicare. Uh, you see $500, $500 billion coming out of Medicare going to fund Obamacare. Uh, that's going to affect our seniors. But uh, not only that, you have the Independent Payment Advisory Board, the IPAB board, a, a board of 15 unelected bureaucrats that are going to look at where they can reduce reimbursements to, to doctors, hospitals, and clinics. And if you reduce the reimbursements to doctors, hospitals, and clinics for Medicare, uh, you're going to impact the quality and access of care for our current seniors. And, and listen, I don't think that's right. Um, but how do you uh, argue? It, how do you argue against that procedure, uh, that process of cutting the costs at the same time as you're arguing that it hasn't cut enough costs? You can't have it both ways. No, no, I'm talking about specifically what happens with Medicare. And uh, what we do is... Well, that's part of the health care savings from the bill. Right. And so we're, we're okay with the savings, but it should go to shore up Medicare, not be used for a different program for someone else. And when you look at Medicare, it's one of the cost drivers. Um, we do it in a way in our budget that says, listen, uh, our seniors have bargained for a promise. Uh, they deserve to get the Medicare they've paid for uh, and they've retired expecting. So we give it to them uh, in, its, in its traditional form for those current seniors. Any changes we make to Medicare are for future generations of retirees, those who are, are 54 and younger. And we think that's a fair way to do it, but to ration care for current seniors, uh, that's just not right. You can't ask someone who's 85 to go buy groceries uh, to make up the difference now for the care they're not getting that they bargained for. Uh, we think that's wrong. Okay, thank you very much. The debate continues. The vote will be sometime around 3 or 4 this afternoon as we, Thanks, as we understand it. Thank you very much, Congressman. And coming up next,